there are a few different ways that you can pre-sell a product using a member vault. I'm gonna walk you through those suggested methods now, but the decision about which method suits you best is really up to you and what suits your scenario most ideally. So the first option here, I'm gonna demo with course one demo here. I'm just gonna open up this product and you'll see here that this product pretty much looks like it's a completed product. I've got my modules in place here. I've got my payment form set up. All my copy is in place in the various different areas. So essentially this looks like it's good to go. What we don't know is that in the background, none of these modules are actually built out. This is just the frame because I already know how I'm going to organize my content in this product. I'm able to go ahead and frame out the modules in advance. The great thing about doing this is that once the modules are framed out, I can control when those modules become accessible by setting the product, product to be a date drip product. Now, I may not want the product to be date drip once it's released and available for people to start engaging with, but I can change that at a later date. This date drip method in this case is only used to protect my content from releasing before the launch of this product's go live date. So in this example, we're saying that this product is gonna go live on August 1st, 2019. So I can be taking in purchases and intaking users into this product all the way up until this time while I'm also still building out the content in the background without worrying that those users who purchase into this product in advance, because it is a payment product, they can't see the progress that I'm making and the work that I'm doing behind the scenes because they won't be able to access these modules until August 1st. Now, when August 1st comes around, I may not want them to have open access to all of these modules right away. I may want them to have to work through it on a uh, more of a progressive nature where they have to go through each lesson and each module in order. So in that case, on the morning of August 1st, before I send the access details or I remind people that the product is now available in terms of the content being released, I can come into the product and I can switch it to progressive without compromising anything. Again, we're only using the date drip in this particular scenario to control the modules from being inaccessible until a specific date. Now, depending on your scenario, you may wanna keep this product as date drip once it's actually released. And in that case, rather than having every module scheduled to release on the same date, you would wanna stagger these to whatever type of release flow you're working with. So if it's weekly release, this one would release on August 1st, the next module would release on say August 8th and so on and so forth. And in that case, the whole process in terms of content accessibility will start based on the first date of release. Again, in this case, we're just using it to maintain um, protection of these modules until the product is actually live and available for access and full purchase. So again, in this scenario, users can still come to the products teaser page, which I'll show you right here. They, this product of course doesn't have, as a demo, doesn't have any images. So it's a little bleak looking, but hopefully you get the understanding, but they'll see the teaser copy for the product. They'll see the payment form where they can um, add in all of their details. And on the right hand side, they'll see the frame of all of the modules. Um, so they know what is basically going to be included with this product, or at least be given a sense of what's going to be included in this product. From there, assuming, let's just say I just purchased this product. If I log in as a user and check out the product now, we'll see up here that I see the welcome message for the product. And I still see the frame of those modules on the right hand side, but the system tells me that they don't unlock until August 1st. So I know that I've purchased in, I've saved my spot, I'm a user of this product, but I have to wait until August 1st to be actually able to access any of the content. Now again, from the admin perspective, even though we've had users purchase into this product, you're still able to work on building out each of these modules because you know that your users won't be able to access them until at least August 1st. So this is a great method if you already have a really good idea of what the overall frame of your product will look like. So if you already know how you wanna organize your content, et cetera, 
this is a great way to go about doing it because you can frame it out, but still be working on building all of the content behind the scenes while you're still allowing people to purchase into the product. And maybe you're offering them an early bird deal, for example. So maybe this one-time fee instead is $197. And then on August 1st, you could come in here and you could change it to $297 for anyone who's purchasing from August 1st and going forward. So those people who purchased during the pre-sale process got it at a lesser um, cost than those who purchased starting on August 1st and going forward. By changing these um, payment details, you're not going to affect anyone who's already purchased into the product during that pre-sale time frame. Now, let's go back to our list of products here and let's look at the other way that we can be managing a pre-sale. So we're going to look at course two here. I'm going to click on this one. Now, essentially, this is what I would call a promo product. Some people like to call it a dummy product, but I call it a promo product. The main purpose of this product is simply to is simply to promote the product that we are wanting to sell. So in this case, I have it set to a regular product. I have one module included, which is just kind of like a welcome, what to expect, how to get prepared, that kind of stuff. But I don't have any of the other modules framed out because essentially what I'm doing is I'm building out the full product, the real product in the background. So this is just used to capture payments and capture the interest of those who want to be in the product early. So this product is just promoting the main product and collecting those pre-purchases. So from right within Member Vault to keep it really easy for the user. So what will happen now is, again, I'm working on building that product in the background. So if we go down here, that's the real product here, Fab Course Real Deal. So this is my real product. You'll see right now I have it set to inactive because I'm still working on building it. But what will happen is when that August 1st date comes or whatever that go live date is, I already have my pre-purchasers in this product here. They're already being held in the promo product. So now all I need to do is make this promo product inactive because I no longer need to do that pre-sell promo. I can now be promoting the main product going forward. So this one, I'm going to turn inactive come that go live date. So let's say August 1st, I'm going to turn this to inactive and I'm going to take all of the users that pre-purchase into this product and I'm going to add them into the real product here. So to do that, there's a couple different ways. You can do that by giving access from your email service using a web hook. You could also export from within Member Vault the list of all of the people who purchased into the promo product. And then you're going to upload that list again so that you can give them all access to the real version of the program. Now, if you only had, say, four or five pre-purchasers, you can go in and give them manual access under the user settings. So under user list, and then you would just search for the um, individuals who are part of that other pre-sale product. Or you can actually do it by going to the pre-sale product. And if you go down to the very bottom, down here, you'll see user access. And say you had four, you know, you had 10 people who purchased your promo pre-sale product. If you click this, you'll see a list of all those people. And you can go into each one individually and manually give them access to this real version of the program or the product. But again, if you had 30 or 40 pre-sales of this product, you're probably going to want to do that in a more bulk fashion. So again, you could use your email service to execute that, um, which is a little bit more of a more advanced method. Or you could do it by exporting the list of the users and importing, re-importing that list of users simply so that you can update their um, product access. And we have tutorials on that in the knowledge base, just in case you need a little bit more guidance on that. Now, again, this is the real product. So I can come here and I can set the price point. And again, maybe that promo product was at a lesser price point. But this product now, come August 1st, I'm going to come in here and I'm going to want to make it active. And all of these modules essentially are now complete and ready for somebody to start um, engaging with. Again, if I don't want them to have access to all of the modules as soon as the product is live, I can make the product either a date drip product or I can make it even progressive so that they have to go through everything in order but at their own pace. 
or it could be time drip. So maybe they have to wait a few days before each module releases. That's completely up to you and how your con you want to let your content flow. But essentially with this process, what we're doing is we're using the dummy product, that promo product to just promote the product we're releasing and collect purchases early in advance. When that go live date happens, we're making that promo product. So this product here, we're making that promo product inactive and we're making the real product active and giving all of the pre-purchasers access to the real product before moving forward. Now, another thing that we can do too, if we go back into this promo product, if you're using an external sales page to sell the product in question, you could also change the sign up type so that it just goes to the link for that sales page. So maybe you're collecting pre purchases on that sales page, or maybe you're collecting a wait list for people to who show their interest on that external landing page. So you could set this promo product to a link and then put in the link of your sales page or your forum page or whatever that looks like right here. Then when somebody's in member vault and they see this promo product and they click on wanting to learn more, the system's going to take them over to your external, um, your external sales page to complete the process that you want them to do over there. So that's another great way, especially if you're going to be using a sales page and you're collecting wait list um, names or anything like that, you could just use this as a forward facing promo product that they don't actually get access to. It's just something that guides them over to your external page. And in that case, if you did that, you wouldn't need to have any modules included because they'll never actually get access to this promo product. So those are the few different ways that you can set a pre-sale process in place within Member Vault. If you have any questions about this, feel free to reach out to us via email at hello at membervault.co or within the chat support in your account, or of course, another great place to um, connect with us and other great users is also our Facebook group.